primary stream. We're not receiving video data at fast enough rate. Your viewers may experience buffering. Ensure your connection is fast enough. Or consider lowering a bit rate. June 18th, 2018 at 3.59 p.m. GMT minus 4. Can you hear me? Can you see me? This big, giant, red word is on my live streaming page that says bad, 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 you're bad. My, oh, good, it just changed the good. The health is good, the stream is fine. I'm here with you and it's coding time. <laughs> four chords. All right, um, here we are, welcome. I would say that this is a special Monday coding train surprise visit, but it's not really because I mentioned I was gonna be here on Monday, and I actually, to be honest with you, I was planning to cancel the live stream today. <laughs> and then somehow, um, overnight, the channel hit uh, 500,000 subscribers, which is a much larger number than I ever imagined could be possible with this nonsense that I'm doing. Um, and so I thought I should do something to celebrate that. I have, um, <laughs> I have some, uh, um, I have to say though, however, and I'm just opening up the chat over here that I see and I see the YouTube chat. I have to say that um, I'm, you, you're not gonna see me for a little while after today, although I have a lot of content, edited content that is yet to be released. So there will be new videos coming out on the channel over the next two weeks, but I am going out of town for a couple days, then I am moving I have not moved in 10 years, but I'm moving from a apartment to another apartment. That is a very complicated thing to do. <laughs> so that's taking up a lot of my mental time and energy. Then I'm going away on another trip uh, and I won't be back in New York until July 12th. So after today, I'm gonna be gone for all of like three weeks possibly. Um, if, 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 if a miracle happens, I will be back next week for like one live stream next week because I am going to be in town and have moved for a couple days. But so I just wanted to put that out there. I, 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 will, I will say though, however, that I am planning right after this is over to go to the barber shop to deal with this. Because <laughs> this, this, can't, this can't be going any longer. Um, so um, now, oh, this is not on. Let's see if I can turn this camera on. Now, um, this is what I had been doing previously, last week. I had been working on a example using tensorflow.js to make a classification project where I'm classifying RGB inputs that are RGB colors, three inputs, and returning one of nine possible labels that say something about the color like bluish, reddish, brownish, etc. cetera. Um, and so I'm trying to show the whole machine learning process from collecting data, cleaning data, training a model, and then predicting with new data and, and that model, testing the model. Um, so I'm about maybe a third or halfway through that. And uh, um, that's the thing that I probably should continue, although, but I'm gonna take a break from that. I only have about an hour and I'm going to try to do something to celebrate 500,000 subscribers. But before I get to that, I have one more thing to say which is that a project that I have been working on, um, but that I really cannot, can I barely take any credit for whatsoever, is um, this project called ML5. And so when I'm back in July, um, I'm hoping to do a lot of tutorials with this machine learning library, which is built on top of TensorFlow.js. So if you wanna learn more about ML5, let me give you some links. Go to ml5js.org. I would also recommend you go to itp.nyu.edu slash adjacent. Now, adjacent, come on, itp.nyu.edu, you can do it, you can load. Adjacent is an online journal from ITP, which is the um, 
program here at New York University Tisch School of the Arts where I uh, work. And there are actually articles by Lauren McCarthy, uh, Adi Melanciano, Zach Coble, Rupa, uh, Dominic, Michael, Allison Parrish. So I encourage you to read all of, all of this that interests you in this journal. In, uh, if you're interested in ML5, uh, you should read everything else but the ML5 article, I think. But if you want to know a little bit more about the background of ML5, if I click on this. Um, this is the uh, article I put together describing all the people who have worked on the projects and their contributions. Um, so you can scroll through here to find out about the history of the project, different um, artists who have visited ITP and contributed. Um, there are some interactive demos, uh, like this one. Look, that's me, and I'm broccoli. Let me hit allow. Oh, I can't. Oh, look. Oh, whoa. Oh, this one. Hmm, I'm still broccoli. All right, let's move on. I think we need to fix that one. Uh, I'm going to generate some text. Um, I'm going to run style transfer. Oh, I'm going to kill this computer. Uh, I did it too many times. Let's see if this one works. Oh, come on. This is going to be great. Oh, yeah. See, remember how I said I was going to do a ukulele tuner? Hit the right pitch, D. So this is a great, Hannah Davis um, put this together. Uh, it's uh, using a model, pre-trained model known as CREP, CREP, CLIP, um, and it uh, detects pitch quite accurately. And the goal of this game is to try to sing the correct note, F sharp. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that's one demo. Let me keep going down here, see what else is here. We have a word to vec model. Pizza is to humans as fish is to birds. And we have PoseNet. Let's see if this one works. Um, which was ported to TensorFlow.js by uh, Dan Ovid. So I'm going to do tutorials using all of these things. I, oh God, why am I? I wish I could just. I wish I could do this all week this week. But I have. The, I guess I'm going to come back in July and be doing these. Um, some information about data and responsible data practices. Scrolling through here. Uh, uh, thank you to Google Creative Lab and the Google Brain Team and the Pair Initiative and the Big Picture Research Group. Many different groups that Google supported this project, and. There are links down at the bottom for where you can find more information. Oh, new sponsor. Welcome, new sponsor. Uh, Divyam Kana, thank you for the sponsorship. Uh, all right, so that's what I wanted to make that announcement about ML5. And uh, let me be clear that while this is a project that I did work on, I am one small, tiny piece of many, many people who uh, contributed to this. Um, we can see a list of many of their names here. Oh, I also, if we go to twitter.com slash ml5js, this is the ml5 uh, Twitter account. And if I go to twitter slash Schiffman, oh, there's going to be all sorts of nonsense there. I got to see if I can find, well, what is that? Oh, my God. Um, okay, this is me waiting, blah, 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 blah. I, oh, it's, there's like ads here. Why? I don't get ads when I... Um, um, and I'm just trying to find the thread. Oh, this is really lame of me. <laughs> this is the thread in reverse. Uh, but uh, here we go. This particular uh, uh, thread is a thread where I attempt to just quickly describe all the people who have worked on in the project. And I, I, there are more people than I'm describing here. If you go to the GitHub, and um, if you're someone who's contributed to ML5, <laughs> and I'm not crediting you properly, please get in touch with me. Um, because it's my goal, uh, really important, to um, be generous with thanks and credits in this world of open source uh, and creative coding and education that I live in. All right. Oh, yes. Another new sponsor, Damiano Zanardo. So now I'm going to get to the 500,000 coding challenge. And uh, let me get myself uh, set up for that. So what I need to do, I'm putting on some music here. Okay, just gotta warm the body up. 
And, uh, like, I got a little bit dizzy there. <laughs> Everything's gonna be okay. I'm gonna look on github.com. Uh, let's look for Mappa. That's not, let's look for Mappa. This is what I'm looking for. So I need this URL. I think there's a documentation website as well. Let's go to here. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's go to, uh, okay, now. Go to the desktop and uh, p5 g b subscriber our YouTube viz. Server here. some CSV files here that I'm going to use for the data. And I'll need this folder. Um, everyone I think just about there all right so um, let me cycle these cameras so I'm gonna attempt to do something very simple here and um, I'm getting a great suggestion from the chat. Burger Bob writes, as a 500,000 special, try using new things like Visual Studio Code or Live Server. All right, I've got, got motivation for all of you watching. Let's see if we can get to a million subscribers in the next 10 minutes, and if that happens, I'll switch to Visual Studio Code. I mean, how, who knows how much longer Adam's even gonna be around? Shouldn't I get to enjoy it while it's still here? <laughs> I love my Adam editor. It's just so comfortable for me. All right, so um, I'm thinking of using the um, I'm thinking of using the Leaflet API. So I need I'm gonna have to say all this again, but Mappa.js is a project. Oh, I, there's another um, medium processing org Mappa. Let's see if I can get this. Mm, here we go. Um, Mappa.js is a project that was a Google Summer of Code project from last summer, 2017. I really had intended to do some tutorials with it back in the fall, um, but somehow I um, didn't get around to it. Um, and this is an article describing it. Apparently my name is here on this article for some reason. But Cristobal Valenzuela is the creator of the Mappa library. And what it does, and this is, oh, this is a wonderful uh, example, one of uh, Ben Fry's original uh, uh, projects uh, called Zip Decode, which is part of his book, Visualizing Data. <laughs> um, and so um, this is a project, this library allows you to interface with another mapping API, like Google Maps or Leaflet, or if we go back to the examples, Mapbox, um, um, and basically embed a map from one of these other libraries into your web page 
put a canvas on top of it and it gives you functionality to as you move around and zoom through the map, you can redraw whatever you're drawing on top of it and resize it according to how you're moving around and zooming in the map. So this is this, this functionality is stuff that I'm going to be using this library for. It's doing really all of the heavy lifting. And so I think I'll start with Leaflet because it doesn't require an API key, but, um, and look, I could probably just copy paste this example because I'm basically going to do exactly this example, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to copy paste this example. I'm going to try to write it in my own way. Um, and, oh, look at this. And there's some tutorials here. Oh, uh, introduction to web maps. Oh, this is amazing. Look at all this wonderful documentation and examples. Um, and projections and this sort of thing. Oh, so much wonderful information here. Um, so, um, uh, what was I saying? I, I started looking at the chat. This is what happens to me all the time. I should just have a rule. There's actually a big, there's a piece of paper. Here, a little special treat for all of you. On the wall, back here behind the camera, is a piece of paper taped to the wall. And this is what it says on it. Look here, as I try to remember to look at you, my friends. My, my, uh, I haven't seen that Mr. Rogers um, documentary yet, but I hear it's amazing. And um, I wanted to say my neighbors there for a second, but I don't think that's, uh, <laughs> I don't think I have, I could say that. Um, oh, okay, so look here, hello. Um, so uh, what I what I have is the data. Let me put the data in here. Oh, yeah, actually, so let me open up Adam. I have two. Um, oh boy. Oh. Maybe I can preview this. So I have a subscribers. Uh, I have a, I have subscribers by country, and I also have uh, I also have I believe watch time the amount of minutes watched by country. Interestingly enough, and this is for all time, this is since the channel was started, so this probably doesn't accurately reflect, say, the, the countries in the last 30 days, but um, we can see here um, United States is at the top. That's, I guess, not a surprise, given that's the country where I am. Uh, Germany, where's Mexico? Come on, Mexico. <laughs> that's right, go Mexico. Oh, I mean, Germany, I like you too, you're great. I just was rooting for Mexico. I mean, I can never root for Mexico. Go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, what was I saying? Use that data for machine learning. Okay, so I think I'm just going to get started with this. Oh, I, I, I should have practiced this. Here, here, um, just want to see, um, leaflet, oh, basic example, um, just seeing like what's a good, oh, this is also such a great reference. Um, hmm. maybe I can make this, oh, it doesn't want to be bigger. I don't want to put, even though it's the here on the internet, I prefer not to put somebody's email address on, well, it's on right now because I'm live streaming. Okay, I guess I don't need to reference this page. Um, I'll just reference that it's down here. Um, and then uh, taxi routes, tutorials, um, simple map. Yeah, I guess we could follow this tutorial. Let me see this. Ah, yep. All right. This tutorial is what I'm going to follow. Perfect. Oh, this is so nice that there's a tutorial written for me to do the coding challenge. <clears throat> Denmark, there's definitely a lot of people from Denmark. Um, all right, we are going to get started. Are live streams included in the data? Yes, well, okay, so just to be clear, 
and I guess I should say this um, during the, I mean, <laughs> this is the, I have this weird thing that I do where I like ramble and then I start, but it's all me just talking. But um, the question was asked by Medin, are live streams included in the data? So what I've done to get this data is I've logged into my creator studio on YouTube and I've done the export to CSV. So I'm entirely relying on, um, and this microphone is all sort of off, I'm entirely relying on what YouTube is giving me. Um, and so, um, and I'm not doing this with the YouTube API, which would be interesting to do, but um, yeah, okay. All right, here we go. Let's get a move on. What's a good, let's start with here. Uh, or here, or here, <laughs> or here. This is good. Okay. Um, the mic is, sh is the mic okay? I, I could put on the hoodie and then it attaches to the hoodie a little bit better. But it, it's, gee, there's like this like heat wave, crazy heat wave in New York City. Sound is fine, picture is fine. What time is it now? 4.23, all right, we're doing well. Uh, the mic shakes a bit when you're dancing and knocks against your body. All right, let me switch. Let me switch to this. Let's try this and see if this is a little bit more stable. <laughs> I like Austin in the chat writes, as long as you're not moving around like crazy, the mic is fine. Well, I have got news for you. <laughs> Have you watched this YouTube channel before? <coughs> Let's see how this goes. Oh, this is my 2017 camp sweatshirt. All right, this makes it much more stable. I don't know what happened to my shirt. <laughs> oh, it's because it's under. Hold on, hold on, everybody. Just bear with me. This is a very professional, this is a very professional live stream thing here going. Hold on, let me just move over here for a second. This is a high-tech professional operation I've got going on here. Teams of producers and video camera operators and script writers and just a sea of people out here <laughs> telling you what to do in my ears, secret messages. That's just me. A little clip thing I'm trying to clip to my sweatshirt. Okay, zip. I think this is gonna be better now. Plus I can do this. <laughs> um, all right. How's that, better everybody? Coding Train brought to you by Mysterious Liquid Inside a Cup. Usually I attempt to use my Clean Canteen, not an official sponsor, because it's better than throwing away these paper cups. But today, that's what I have. All right. Try moving around. Okay, so Alka says I need to try moving around like crazy. Oh, thank you, Dennis for the super chat. <laughs> Is the mic okay now? <laughs> What's this? <laughs> I can't do it, the pickle. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's, I think I gotta get started here. I am not, please begin. <laughs> be so annoying we're not going to include that <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> hello I'm making a video coding challenge today to celebrate some large amount of subscribers which is kind of insane and then right after this I'm going to go to the barbershop so please I'm aware 
I really let this go here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with it. All right, what am I gonna do today? I'm gonna to celebrate uh, the subscribers, the viewers of The Coding Train with a visualization. And I'm going to use a, a library that I've been meaning to use for quite a while called mappa.js. It was a Google Summer of Code project last summer, 2017, uh, with the Processing Foundation, created by uh, Cristobal Valenzuela. So um, there, uh, if you go to the uh, mappa.js.org website, there's a ton of tutorials, introduction to web maps, a history of different projections. So there's so much interesting good stuff here. I also, if you scroll down here, I'd really recommend taking a look at Mimi Onuoha's Everything is Spatial, Data and Digital Mapping uh, work. Um, so I'd love to get into all of this, but I'm just gonna try to do something really basic. I have on my computer, if I could find it. <laughs> Why didn't I get organized before I started this? Uh, YouTube, here we go. I have some CSV files. These CSV files I downloaded through the Creator Studio. Uh, so I logged in with my account in the Creator Studio. I went to the analytics and then there's an export to CSV. So presumably there is some way for me to get this data with the YouTube API. Um, and I would encourage you, uh, hopefully, I'm hoping people will make stuff either with their own YouTube channels or I, I think it's okay for me to publish this data. There's no user information in it. So I will check, but I'll probably, I'll, I will also publish uh, this data as well, people want to re-visualize it in interesting ways for me. Oh, not for me, for you, but anyway, whatever. You get the, <laughs> the point is, this is not going very well. Why have you subscribed to this channel? What is wrong with you? There are perfectly legitimate tutorial things for you to watch out there. Um, ah, what I was, uh, was going to show you is uh, I have all of the subscribers by country, and I have also uh, all of, I have watch time by country. This is the watch time in minutes. Apparently, people have watched, I can't, I can't even read that, <laughs> that number. It's 41 million, 100 in the US, some 41 million minutes. That's really, that's really weird. <laughs> um, I mean, it wasn't just one person, I hope. I was gonna, this is a mapping visualization tutorial, isn't it? Mm, okay, let's go. Okay, so how, what am I gonna do here? Well, first, so I'm gonna come back to uh, Mappa. Uh, the GitHub for Mappa is here, by the way. The, all these URLs will be in the video's description if you're still watching or maybe you're just left and are reading the description now or watching some other machine learning tutorial. <laughs> okay. um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this, I'm basically gonna follow this tutorial by Chris called Simple Map. Uh, Mappa is an interface to other mapping APIs like Google Maps, Mapbox, Leaflet, um, uh, um, and maybe I'm missing MapQuest. Wow, MapQuest still exists? That's amazing. I'm staying over here. Look, MapQuest. Um, so uh, I'm going to use Leaflet uh, just because uh, from, you don't need an API key for Leaflet, so it makes it a little easier for me to just roll on in and make this project. Um, but I encourage you to try this with Google Maps or Mapbox um, yourself. Okay, but well, let's get started here. So the first thing that I want to do actually has nothing to do with mapping. I want to say function preload because I want to load in all the data. So I want to say, uh, to celebrate, I'm going to use const. Const? is a way of declaring a variable that you're not allowed, to, that you're saying I'm never going to reassign this variable to a new value. There's some nuance to that, but that's the basic idea. So I'm gonna, it's really a, a means to protect myself here. So I'm gonna say const subscriber, subscriber data. Then in preload, I'm gonna say, I can't spell subscriber, subscriber data equals load table. Ooh. Now, load table is a function inside of P5, as part of P, the P5.js library, that is specially suited for loading CSV data, tabular data. Some other videos where I use that and describe that in more detail. Um, so I, I wanna just, let's start with subscribers underscore geo, subscribers underscore geo dot CSV. Then I just want to in setup then say console.log subscriber data. So let's first make sure I can actually load the CSV in the first place. And I'm going to go over here, hit refresh. <laughs> Missing initializer in const declaration. Oh, okay, well, I can't use const here. Oh, this is such a failure already. So I can't use const. Why? Because this is me reassigning it. I didn't assign it up there. So I'm going to use let. <laughs> what is it? 
Some other day I'll find the perfect example. I'm going to use const somewhere else in this. You'll see. Const is very hard to say. All right. So now we're loading. Ooh. Hmm. It's still loading. This really is not going very well. <laughs> I don't think it's taking all this time to load. I think that I have a mistake. <laughs> uh, load table subscribers geo. Now let me just see here. What version? And I'm in the recent version of P5. There, there was at some point um, an issue with using load table in preload. I thought that had been ironed out by now. Um, let me make a, let me just make, let's do a little test here. Um, um, well, this, by the way, this video is going to have lots of extra stuff in it. I'm just letting this go. No editing. No editing. Um, I'm going to make a test.csv file. So even if it's like an hour or 500 minutes, that would be appropriate. All right, so uh, A, B, C, one, two, three. So I'm just going to make a test. Uh, this is how I like to debug things. I'm going to make a test CSV file. Just try loading that. Oh, I saw something there for a second. Look, it's like there. Preload setup. Hmm. Hold on. What is going on? What? What craziness? Let's see here. Subscriber data. It's there. Huh. Check the network tab. So is this a bug in P5? Let's take a look at the P5 uh, GitHub. <laughs> okay, uh, let's look for, <laughs> we might have some editing. We might have some editing. Take that back. Uh, load table. Uh, I want to look under issues. Uh, cannot, no, no, load table, lock, no, 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 no. Hmm. Let's try to look at the load table preload. Ah, this looks like it was fixed though. <laughs> this looks familiar to me. <laughs> oh my God. I am just doomed to repeat the same videos over and over again. I made an earthquake visualize, visualizer. And I think probably I ran into this issue then as well. Um, yeah. All right, all right. All right, we're gonna, let's go back to this. What is going on? Uh, let's put in a draw function. Um, and see if that helps anything. Restart the browser. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's just switch to XOR because I, I, every, every few weeks I redo solving XOR with some machine learning technique. All right, I, I don't think restarting the browser is going to do anything here, but um, it's not a bad point. Uh, whoops, ah, okay. All right, there's going to be an edit point here. Oh, it's just being like incredibly slow. Alco was saying, check the network tab. Why is it being so slow? Yeah, it's just slow. So can anyone explain this to me? This is going to be an edit point. That's why I made a test file. Like, why did it take 11 seconds to load that file? No, but I switched to using test.csv, which is a tiny file. Um, and these aren't even that big. <laughs> 12 bytes. Why did it take 11? That's like one second per byte. Why is it doing that? Hmm. 
Restart the server. That's a good idea. Oh, maybe the server is like horrible at this. Oh. No. All right, let's try. Um. There we go. All right, so weird. Weird. The Python server was like, all right, so I'm just going to go back. All right, so I, I had to, we, had to, we had to edit there. There was no way around it. I learned something new. So in the browser, there's this, in the console, in the, in the developer tools, there's this thing called network. And I'm going to hit refresh right now. And oops, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to put it at localhost 8000. I'm going to hit refresh. Look at this. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, waiting for it to load. The file's only 12 bytes. taking a really long time. <laughs> this, this was just meant to be a demonstration. fine with 11 seconds, that would be like a demonstration. <laughs> All right. I'm going to demonstrate this a different way. <laughs> okay. All right. I had to edit this there. There was no way around editing it there. Uh, I did, however, I, I, I think I have a path to move forward and I've learned something new. Um, inside the developer tools, I usually just look at this console thing. There is this tab called network. And what we can see here, look at this. The test.csv file is just pending, 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 pending. It's never loading. Oh, it finally loaded. It took, uh, I, I can't, ah. I want to be able to see. It took 26 seconds, 26 seconds to load that file. That file, test.csv, is exactly 12 bytes, meaning that's like two seconds per bytes. This is very byte, very unreasonable. So I don't know what's going on, but I, the, 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 I, don't, I don't want to blame anybody. It's nobody's fault. Things just work as they work sometimes. But I'm getting some weird behavior with this Python server that I'm using. And actually, if I change, and use, I have a node server, HTTP-server, also uh, uh, available on my computer. So I'm going to run that via terminal, HTTP-server, and then I'm going to go back over here. Oh, wait, no, I have to go to a different, yes, different port. And look at this, three milliseconds, test CSV. So now we can go back. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. I can go back to subscribers underscore geo dot CSV. There we go. Okay. Now we've got that file. I'm going to go back to the console. I'm going to look at subscriber data and I can see, there we go. I've got an array with uh, 237 rows. So it means there's 237, uh, oh, there's 53 columns. There's lots of extra data in there other, and there's 237 rows. Now, one thing is all the none of the columns have a name. So one of the things I want to do is P5, if I give it this nice little second argument and say header, I think, that says the first row in the CSV file is the header. 
And we can see that if I click on here, you can see these are all the headers that are actually there in that first row. Um, so now let me go back and refresh. I'm going to look at the subscriber data again. Go look at here. We can see, ah, there it is. So country name, country ID, and subscribers. And then there's other, all sorts of other columns, um, transactions and ad revenue and all sorts of stuff. So I'm probably going to clean up this data when I publish this just to have only the first three columns, um, country name, country ID, and subscribers. So that's all that I'm going to use for this example. So now, what's next? I need a way of iterating over every single one of those. So let's just look at how I might do that. I don't know how, but I'll figure it out. For let i equals zero, i is less than subscriber data dot, I don't know, total columns. Let's look at the API, p5js.org. Let's look at the reference. I'm going to look for p5.table. And I guess if I go here under P5 table, we're going to see add row, remove row, get row, find row, find rows, match row. I'm looking for uh, total, huh, huh. Oh, columns, rows, looking for rows. <laughs> it's just in a field. Subscriber data dot rows, I plus plus. Then I'm going to say uh, the row is subscriber data.getRow i, and let me just look at the rows. Go back here. Um, let's look at, I haven't done this in a while. Uh, line 10, oh, rows is an array of all the rows. Ha, that's even more convenient. So let row, it's not a number, I thought it was a total, of subscriber data dot row. I can use a for of loop. And now uh, I can just look at each row one at a time. There we go, that's each row one at a time. Then I can say uh, console log row get column, uh, what were the columns again? Country, let's look, country, oh it's sort of like Adam just knows. <laughs> that's right, country ID. And let's do this. Ooh, get column is not, oh, maybe it's just get. Yes, there we go, get. It's just get, and I get the country ID. Now I want to get uh, console log row dot get, um, uh, what was it called? Subscribers. Subscribers, okay. Awesome. There we go. So I now have Country ID followed by subscribers. Country ID followed by subscribers. Okay, we're getting somewhere. <sighs> Should probably find the minimum and the maximum and normalize things, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, now, now let's go back to the mapping tutorial. <laughs> now, what's it been, like two hours since I started this? So I'm gonna go back to this simple map example. And first of all, I need to include a reference to this map, uh, MAPA library. Uh, in my HTML file. So I'm going to just copy paste this here and I'm going to go to index.html and uh, one of these days I'll learn how all this fancy new module stuff works, but this is the way I like to do it right now. I'm going to reference that library. Let's go back to the tutorial. <laughs> Welcome to reading through a tutorial and copying the code over to your own code. But thank you to this excellent documentation uh, for the MAPA library. So um, I want to create, oh look at this. There we go. Const. Let's create a new MAPA instance. So I want to make a new map pulling from the leaflet API. Um, just to be clear, leaflet is this, a jo open source JavaScript library for mobile friendly interactive maps. So again, you can use leaflet directly by just going right there and looking at how the code works. MAPA provides a layer on top of that also because it you can pick other things besides Leaflet, as well as it integrates nicely with P5 and probably other JavaScript libraries. All right, so now, uh, let's just refresh. Let's make sure things are still working. Things are still, ooh, there was an error at the top there. Um, ref, it, because it's mime type is ex, not executable. What did I do wrong here? Hmm, we have a little bit of an issue. Strange. Why did MAPA, oh, 
Let me just take, what's going on here? Why did I get that error message? Let me take out this console log. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh -huh. Doesn't seem to mind it with the P5 libraries. Hold on, there's another edit point. Uh, no, but no one's telling me anything. Uh, what's going on here? Let's look at this. Oh. Interesting. So I think it's broken. I don't know if Chris is watching. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, let's see, hold on. Um, no, let's look at NP, oh, look at this. Uh, 0.5, I got 0 0.004, let's look at NPM, uh, I mean NPM mappa. This is the same exact link, I mean I could just download the library, whoops. Yeah, weird. So I'm just, I don't know why 0, 0 0.5 is not working. I assume everything will work fine in 0, 0 0.4. I hope that's not going to trip me up, but. Um, let's file a GitHub issue. Um, Oh yeah, look at this. Ah, yes, yes, look at this. Oh, look at that, there we go, okay. So I can use JS deliver, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Chris. That's okay. The CDN in the page is broken. That's good. See, let me, should I, should I, should I, should I, should I won't write a note here because Chris is there <laughs> in the Slack group. All right, so this is fine. I'm going to use this. Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm back. It turns out that there's just a little bug with this CDN link. Um, and so I'm going to use a different CDN link, uh, which is this one and it's working, check the MAPPA web page for whatever the currently working version of this is. By the time this video gets published, hopefully it'll, it'll probably be fixed. Okay, MAPPA is now loaded, excellent. Okay, so now we can go back and we can go to this uh, tutorial. Once again, I was on this simple map tutorial and we can see here, what's the next step? I wanna create, now there's different kinds of maps I can create. There's what's, um, and the world is broader than just this, but I'm gonna talk about two right now. There's a static map and a tile map. A static map is a map that's just, give me the map, it's the image of the map, I'm gonna draw it, I'm never gonna change. A tile map is one that I wanna move around, zoom in and out of, and the reason why it's called a tile map is because the way that the mapping APIs generally load it is they load it as a bunch of different tiles because you don't wanna get one big image all at once, you get a bunch of different images and they get tiled. So I wanna create a tile map and this gives, the, the arguments here is like, well, what do I want, where do, where do I want the map to be centered around and uh, what zoom level do I want to be? So let's try mappa, um, my map equals mappa tile, uh, tile map. So I want to say, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to say, I'm going to say let uh, uh, train map and I'm going to say a train map equals mappa tile map and let's just give it a latitude longitude of zero, zero and a zoom level of four. That was what's in the tutorial. And let's see if we see that at all. 
Uh, I'm going to go here. And so now, uh, one thing is I've, let me, let me, uh, let me take, uh, let me get rid of the canvas. All right, so I'm probably missing a step here. I know that I have to overlay the canvas, but let's see, I don't see the map yet. Do I need to overlay the canvas? Or, uh, yeah, so I guess if I don't overlay the canvas, the map doesn't show up, perhaps? <laughs> Uh, creator of Mappa is in the, in the chat right here, so I might hear in a second what I'm saying that's wrong. So I'm going to, uh, ah, so I need a reference to the canvas. I'm going to say canvas, and I'm going to say uh, canvas equals create canvas, and then I want to say, uh, do, which, which do I say? Which, the, the Mappa map, I want to say the train map, I want the canvas to sit on top of it. Overlay, yeah, I do. So confirm, du, 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 breaking news, I do have to overlay. I'm not going to see the map unless I overlay the canvas on top of it. Okay, so these are the steps here. I want a canvas that I can draw on. I want a tile map, and then I want my canvas to sit on top of it. So now, if we go here, oops, train map overlay is not a function. Mm, mm, oh, the camera went off. That's another added point. Train map overlay. Train map overlay is not a function. Okay, what did I get wrong? <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job here. Let me go to the tutorial. MyMap.overlay canvas. Did I say overlay with a capital L? Yes, I did. <laughs> overlay is one word, people. <laughs> Lowercase L. Okay, here we go. Ah. On load, set up sketch, hmm, what did I get wrong now? New Mappa leaflet. <laughs> I'm just giving up on the no editing thing. <laughs> uh, does it not work with preload? Oh, I have notifications on my phone. Does it not like preload? Let's just take this out for a second. Shouldn't matter. No. Line 14, which is here, canvas, train map, and actually this map a tile map, overlay canvas. Hmm. Click back through the stack. Oh, does it expect a promise? No. Oh, I, does it not ready yet? Let's look. No. This is what it says in the tutorial here. Hmm. Let's try previous version of Mappa. Ah, there we go. <laughs> okay, everybody. We found another bug. Just want to make sure. Uh, why am I not able to move around in the map? Um, Let me just make sure I get this working first. How come I don't actually see a map? Oh, am I missing like another step? I'm, I didn't read, I should have read the full tutorial. Oh yeah. Oh, I need to put these in. I need to put, I need to say what style we just need to specify a set of tiles, a warning message. So I didn't see the warning message. Oh, you know what? There is a warning message. I think I have warnings turned off. How do I turn warnings back on? <laughs> I'm doing a terrible job with this. 
<laughs> you know, used to, the way I used to do this YouTube channel is I would do this like in class during the day <laughs> and I would work all this stuff out. Then I would come onto YouTube and I'd have all this stuff worked out. Uh, <laughs> Read the manual and be told. Wait, where is the uh, setting for uh, warnings? I'm getting very like, <laughs> I'm getting very sweaty over here. Uh, show warnings. I want to show warnings. It's not showing me the warnings. I don't need to go into settings for the warnings. Show warnings. Show warnings. Show me the warnings. Click on filter output. There we go. Ah, yes, warnings. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, got it. <sighs> okay. All right. Backing up. <laughs> Backing up. Backing up. Oh, does 0.5 require a promise? No, I don't think so. Yeah, the, the, the error is probably a P5 error. So, um, let's, let me just move on here. Okay. Um, oh, it's not a P5 one? <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, so much for my no editing. <laughs> there was another edit there. Uh, unfortunately, whatever, for whatever reason, whatever I'm doing is throwing, giving me an error. I discovered if I revert back to one version earlier of the MAPA library, um, then the error goes away. So I can refresh. Oops, I have to hit save. And then I can refresh. Aha, now, okay, so first of all, if you're watching this video, hope, the source code is hopefully going to, by the time you're watching this, be using the most recent version of MAPA. Maybe I'll have to figure that out. Um, but for now, I'm going to keep going. Now, interestingly enough, it says, you're not using any tiles for your map. Try with. So one of the things is, I have to specify a particular set of tiles that I want to load. And if I would have just read further down in the tutorial, it would show me that actually, one way to do that is to put all of those things, like I, I was saying I want the center to be 0, 0 and the zoom level to be 4. Now I need to also give it a style. All of those can go into a JavaScript object. So I'm just going to copy paste this from here. <laughs> uh, this is a YouTube video where I am copy pasting code from a tutorial and like making lots of mistakes still somehow anyway. Um, and then I'm, so I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to put um, Instead of putting the arguments directly in the function, I'm just going to write the variable name options. We are now going to refresh again. And now, ah, look at this. There is my map. So one thing I really want to do is I want to give myself more space to work with. So let's try like 800 by 600. Um, and I, I think I want to zoom out by default a lot more. So what, I don't I think a lower number would be zooming out. Yeah, that's maybe too much, 1.5. All right, that'll do to start, okay? So this is what, how I want it to load initially. And again, maybe 0, 0 isn't the best middle point, and there's all sorts of other things I could do. But now we've got the map there. Now, I just want to do something. I just want to say uh, ellipse, 100, 150. Let's just see, what happens if I draw? And I'm going to uh, do a nice purplish color, which is my favorite color. Let me do this. <gasps> Look at this. There's that ellipse. Now that ellipse is staying where it is. So at, there, at a minimum, what I have right now is the ability to draw over the map. And I can do all of the map interactions and my P5 canvas is right there. Now I have to be careful if I were to put this background here. I don't see that map anymore. And what I really should be doing is using the clear function. The clear function is like putting a background that's fully transparent. So this now, you can see, I don't know if you could notice this before, without the clear function, there was some funny anti-aliasing going on because I was drawing the circle actually on top of itself multiple times. Okay, but the point is what I want to do is, let's say I have a circle that's on the map over here. If I zoom in, I want that circle to stay where it is and grow with the map. Um, okay, so how do we do that? Let's go back to the tutorial. And I'm not going to worry about lat long. But, um, oh yeah, no, no, I, I do want to worry about that. So this is the key here. Lat map 
lat long to pixel. So the idea here is that I have a latitude and longitude and I want to find the pixel location of that no matter where the map is. So let's, let's just take this, no matter what zoom is, let's take this and copy it into our code. And I should now see, hit refresh, uh, whoops, I got an error again. La oh, uh, my, my map. I called it train map. So we can see there is now a circle here, hopefully on top of the country of Nigeria. Looks right to me. Um, and I can zoom in and we can see that circle is continuing to move as I move the map around. Now, here's the thing. So I happen to find that from the example. Thankfully, I just got a message in the chat for the next thing I was about to look for, which is a data set that has the lat longitude value for every single country. So I'm just gonna, um, I think I could probably Google for it. Um, canonical countries, CSV, lat long, something like that would probably, yes. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the countries.csv data set. And this now has a country uh, each, every country with the latitude and longitude associated with it. So how do I download this? Countries.csv. <laughs> You'd think there'd be a download link on this page somewhere. Mm, somebody's going to tell me how to download this. Uh, the tutorial, guides. I could star it. I like it. I'm going to give it five stars. Ah, I don't know. I don't know where to download this. Uh, samples. Overview. No, that's this menu is not helping me. I'm just gonna look at the chat. Like I, I become so lazy in my live streaming that instead of trying to ever figure anything out, I just sit here and wait till somebody in the chat tells me what I'm missing, which is really not good. Uh, oh my goodness, it's five o'clock already too. Oh, this is not going. This is not going as expected. Um, do I have to like query it somehow? Geo, XML, oh, it's gonna give it to me in XML. Uh, oh. uh, samples, okay, samples. Um, canonical concepts, is it the geo one? All files. Um, no. Uh, geo, not dot us, entity, no, geographic canonical concepts. Uh, um, don't download from here. There's another, oh, that gist, okay. Uh, Sindra Sorhus gist. And, um, Number 1341699. Okay. This will work. Okay. Download buttons in all files. Wait, hold on. I really want to figure this out. All files. Where's all files? Let me go back to samples. Okay. Tutorial, uh, all files. Downloads, ah, here we go. What, like, tutorial data set, where? This is crazy. Yeah, it would be easier to copy paste at this point, <laughs> wouldn't it? I'm looking at my chats over here. I really need to just put the chat over there. This is ridiculous. Um, this really seems insane. Uh, am I in the right place? Even remotely close to the right place? Canonical concept, geo, all files. Ah, downloads, there we go. Same thing. Well, let's try downloading some of these. Tutorial.
Huh, is this it? <laughs> it's got five countries in it. Okay, so that's the tutorial. Maybe it's the DSPL tools. <sighs> All right, I'm, I'm going to give up. I'm going to give up and use that gist. At the bottom, there's a CSV link. Okay, hold on, hold on. Kelly Murphy is sending me a mess message. Public data, okay, hold on. Developers.google, yeah, country CSV. Ah, canonical geo, whoops. CSV. <laughs> no, that's to this page. <laughs> that's not a download link. That's just to this page. <laughs> okay. Okay, I give up. I give up. Uh, where's the gist? Okay. <laughs> okay, if somebody can figure out for me, if you, can, if you can figure out how you download this file, sure, I could copy paste it. I can't find anywhere on this page of how to download this file. And no one in the chat seems to be telling me. So I'm moving on. I got a nice suggestion. There is this GitHub gist. Uh, and I can just click over here to raw, and this is now every single country code uh, with the lat long. Um, I'm going to assume that this is correct. I'm going to copy paste this into a new file. I'm going to call this uh, countries.csv, and um, I'm going to paste it in here. So now I have, oh, not CSV, it's JSON, excuse me. Uh, countries uh, JSON. And so, good. so now I have all the countries, uh, and they're lat long by, in JSON, so now I need to go back to my code. And I am going to say, uh, let me have another variable called countries, and I'm going to say uh, countries <laughs> equals load JSON and uh, countries.json. So now I want to just make sure um, that that came in okay. Console.log countries. I can't spell or type. When I, I'm going to be going away for a couple weeks after I record this video. When I get back, everything's going to make sense and, and work again in my tutorials. I'm not going to make all these mistakes and never get anything done. Okay, so there we go. So now I can see, excellent. So I have, oh, and I have beautiful. I, the object, I can actually look up by the country code. Um, great. I can look up by the country code, which is exactly what I want. So now, let us, let me take this loop, I'm going to go over here. We're kind of, I think that in a moment, I am going to now get the country ID. Now, I think something a little bit funny is going on here where if I look here, the country IDs are in capital letters and in my countries.json file, they're lowercase letters. So I'm going to need to, to be conscientious about that. So I want to say let country equal row.get country ID, and I'm going to say, I think I could just say uh, to lower case. Is that a JavaScript function? <laughs> In Java, there's definitely a string function that sends things to lower case. So I think that's right. Then I can get the lat long uh, is, is what? I want to look at the countries by country. Um, and I'm, um, so now that's going to give me that array with lat long, and then the latitude is the lat long index zero, and the longitude is the lat long index one. And now I'm going to say, I want to say the pixels, pixel coordinate is train map 
And now, I'm not hard coding it, I'm getting it from that, so now I say, I'm getting it from that C, uh, JSON file, lat long, and then now well, let's draw an ellipse at, um, and I'm just gonna call this pix, at uh, pix.x, pix.y, 2020. So now I should see a circle at every single country where there is at least one person who subscribes to the channel. And here we go. Oh, what did I get wrong here? Cannot read, you know, interestingly enough, this is, I, uh, this is like this very generic error that's coming up no matter what, uh, if I do something wrong. Sketch.js line 41, what have I done wrong? Let me look. Let's look at these first, console.log country. Let's take a look to make sure my countries are actually correct. So those look right. Those look like reasonable country codes. Ooh, let's say no loop, by the way, because uh, right now I just want to do it once. Okay, so those look like the country codes. Now, uh, let's see. Um, so this is countries. Countries.ad is that, and so I should be saying uh, console log lat long. Let's look at that. Okay, oh, there's some that are undefined. So for whatever reason, I have some countries in my data set that I don't have a lat long for, so I, uh, that's why I got that error message. So I just need to be uh, careful about that. And I need to say uh, only if lat long exists, like there's some that are undefined, then I should be able to pull the lat longitude out and draw a circle. And um, let me get rid of no loop now. Let me say uh, fill 255, 0, 200. Um, let me put my semicolon there. <laughs> oh, yes! So look at this, look at all of you beautiful people all over the world who are subscribed to this channel from all of these different countries. This is amazing. Oh, and I got this horrible thing going on where I'm console logging, gotta get rid of that. You do not want to console log from within a loop, within a loop, a zillion things. That'll really mess stuff up. Um, let's go find Australia. Australia, look at this. Let's, can we find a country with nobody? I'm not sure country that I need to, uh, so we've really got the center of, 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 of everything. This is great. Okay, so now <laughs> we're getting somewhere. I can see everything there. And um, now what I want to do is actually size the circles according to the total number of subscribers. <sighs> okay, hmm, here's the thing. Oh. Time out for a sec. Okay, here's the thing. Now, first of all, I want to use the whiteboard, but I'm working on this color classifier with TensorFlow.js, and these are all my notes from it. I don't want to erase it. So just bear with me here. This is like a moment of insanity here. I am going to talk you through something in a little like blank area. Where's the blankest, the blankest of the blank areas? Looks like this is a nice little blank area over here that I can use. Can you see all that? <laughs> no, you can't. Hold on, hold on. Let me do that again. <laughs> I got to get to the barbershop before it closes. <laughs> I can't go out of town looking like this. <laughs> Let me try that one more time. <laughs> All right, here's the thing. I want to talk you through something that's a really important little crucial detail here. And I want to diagram it for you, but I have this. Maybe what I can do is just turn the camera. I'm working on this. Um, I'm working on this. Oh, boy. Ah! I shut the camera off by accident. Uh, am I back? Yes. I'm working on this TensorFlow.js color classifier, and um, I didn't want to erase my notes for it. So now I think I have some extra space over here. <laughs> so I'm sorry for being completely like a crazy person, not like, uh, whatever. I'm going to diagram this for you here. So here's the thing. I am drawing circles in P5 with the ellipse function. Can you see that? I think you can, the ellipse function. So let's say this is a circle with a, di with a uh, diameter of 10. 
And this is a circle with a diameter of 5. Okay? Circle with a diameter of 10, circle with a diameter of 5. Let's say this is a country with 10 subscribers, and this is a country with 5 subscribers. Have I visualized this accurately? No. <laughs> the answer is no. Why? Think about this for a second. If I were to do this, this is a bar chart, 5, and this is 10, you know, this is accurate. This is twice the size of this. Is this twice the size of this? Well, the radius here is 5. Oh, can I make these like 8 and 4? <laughs> the point, let me make these 8 and 4. Just, just, please, 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 please allow me to make them 8 and 4. So the radius is 4, and the radius here is 2, right? So what is the area of this? Pi r squared, 16 pi. The area of this, pi r squared, 4 pi. This is actually four times the size as this. So I need to be conscientious about this. What I actually want to do is take the total number of subscribers and apply the square root to it so that when, I, when, when it's being visualized into a circle, it will actually be representative, the area of that circle will represent the total number of subscribers. Okay, we can, go, we can come back over here now. All right, so here we go. This is where I am. Let me see, what was the zoom level when I opened it up? Great. So now what I want to do is I should be able to right here say uh, let subscriber, oh, let's, let's say like sub count equal row dot get, and I already forgot what's in the CSV file. Um, if I quickly look at it here, it is uh, just the word subscribers. Uh, subscribers, and I'm going to say let uh, diameter equal the square root of the sub count, and I, I'm, I definitely should do some sort of mapping, but I'm not going to worry about that right now, and then I'm just going to then put diameter here, and I'm going to give this some alpha because I have a feeling I'm going to have some really big circles, and now I'm going to refresh. There we go. Look at this. We have now visualized the subscribers. Uh, and we can see here, this makes sense, like there is a lot of subscribers uh, in India. Um, and we can, look at, uh, we can look at Africa. We can see that South Africa and Kenya and Nigeria. Uh, if we look up here in Europe, we can kind of see here that uh, um, uh, uh, Deutschland, uh, Germany, uh, and England over here, we can see the different countries, France. So this is actually, and this should be accurate. I could write the number. There's so much I could do here visualization-wise. This really isn't be, like a tutorial in, in the end about, you know, d visualization. I'm really just trying to get the mechanics of it to work. Um, and one thing I might want to do, I mean, the, the circles are just so, wait, why are they? Oh, they should be sized according to the zoom level. Oh, weird. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the chat. Oh, sorry, people are in the chat are talking about other stuff. Um, I just realized something. The circles are not resizing according to, um, according to the zoom level. So how do I do that? There's got to be a way in the MAPPA library. Let's look at... Um, Let's look at the API. So if I go under uh, leaflet, um, we can see, look, this is actually changing, right? We can see this example, the circles are changing. And let's see how that's done. Um, uh, map.zoom. So map.zoom. So this is a way that I can use the zoom level of the map to change the size of the circles. So one way I could do that is by saying something like diameter divide. Uh, divided by train map dot zoom. Is it just dot zoom? Oh, it's a function dot zoom. So let's see what happens there. Uh, where do I go now? Oops, ah, where was, where was I? Come back, did I lose it? Uh, oh, oh no, I'm over here, okay. So now, oh no, I think I need to multiply it by zoom. Hold on. Oh, I have a new sponsor. Pause for a second. Uh, no, don't. I have to thank the sponsor after. Thank you. Uh, it's CLX. Thank you, it's CLX. Hello, new sponsor. Ah, I got to get those emojis and icons. Okay. Um, all 
All right, if you think about it, <laughs> the zoom level, right? I come back to my crazy little place over here. <laughs> if you can bear with me for a second. Uh, if I have a circle like this, a higher zoom number is me zooming in. So I don't want to divide by the zoom level. I want to multiply by the zoom level because the size of the circle is going to be what it is at zoom level one. If I zoom in by two, that circle should grow twice the size. So I don't know why, I didn't really need to walk over there, but mentally I needed to take a break. No, 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 from <laughs> stupid sound effects. Uh, okay, mentally I just needed to take a break here. So, I don't, uh, so what I need to do is say times zoom, and then now, look at this, it's, everything's way too big. So now I need to figure out an effective way to, uh, to lower everything. So one thing I could do is I could find the, I, I probably should just like pre-process the data in setup, right? There's no reason for me to like do all this parsing over and over again. So let me pre-process the data in setup. And I'm gonna create my own uh, array. So I'm gonna say uh, uh, data is just an array. I'm going to say data is an array. Then I'm going to go to setup. I'm going to paste in that loop. I'm going to get the country. And then here I'm going to get the pixel. Oh, I don't want the pixel location. I just want the lat long and the sub count. So then I'm going to say, uh, what am I going to say here? I'm going to say data.push. I'm just gonna make an object. Now, ooh, ooh, ooh. Guess what? What's that thing called in the new, what's that thing called in new JavaScript where you, I wanna make an object, and what I wanna do is I wanna say lat, lat, long, 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 sub count, sub count. This is, how I, this is how I always have written my code. I want to create an object with these properties, and the properties have the same name as the variables. You don't have to do that anymore. JavaScript, new fancy JavaScript, ES something or other, allows me to just do this. Lat long sub count. And by definition, uh, it's going to assume that if I generate an object this way, that I want the property name to be the same name I want the property name to be the same name as, um, as the actual uh, variable name itself. Destructuring, I'm being told. Restructuring, I don't know, I'm structuring. I'm structuring this. Wait, wait. Are there 2,000, there's not 2,000 people watching this right now, are there? To pause for a second. Enhanced objects literals, it's enhanced object literals. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is not going to go. Enhanced object literals is a thing I learned quite very recently. In Someone, somebody told me in the Slack channel about it and that I should be using it. <laughs> okay. Apparently, uh, it is known as enhanced object literal. So this is, an, I, I want to create an object literal and I want to create it in an enhanced fashion. So now that I have this, now that I've done this, now I'm going to do a little thing here. I'm going to say uh, max subs equals zero and min subs equals 100, uh, infinity. Now I know, I know. I did, I am using enhanced object literals, and I know there's a higher order function sort of fancy way that I could just do this instantly, but I'm just going to, since well, I already have this loop anyway, I'm just gonna say if sub count is greater than, what was it, max subs? Then max subs equals sub count. I just wanna find what was the largest number of subscribers, and I also want to find out uh, what was the minimum number of subscribers. So now that I have the minimum and the maximum, if I come down here and I can, now I can just say for a country, let country of data and, oh, oh, I want the country ID. I need the, oh no, 
oh, look at that. I don't, I guess I don't need the country ID anymore. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I want to save the country ID. So now I just want to say, I don't need this if anymore. I don't need this lat long, all the parsing has been done. I just want to say, now I just want to say country dot lat country dot long. And then uh, I don't need to, I, the sub count is, all right, country dot sub count. And I want to say the, and this should be a const also, should be, uh, I'm going to say the square root, oh, of the, hmm. Boy, I'm having a lot of extra square roots here. Let me, uh, let me actually add, um, let me do this. Let uh, square, uh, um, let me do square, squirt, square root. <laughs> uh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm gonna just put the diameter in here. Uh, square, I'm gonna calculate it up here just once, and I'm gonna add this in here. And then, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Let's just do all of this up here. I'm gonna just do this parsing up here too. Then I'm gonna go through it again one more time. Yeah, 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 I know I could use a higher order function. I expect many pull requests and comments about that. And I'm gonna say, uh, and now I'm gonna say let country of data, and I'm gonna say country.diameter equals map the country's diameter between the, which goes between the square root, ah, right, 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 right. I don't want to put the diameter in here. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a new, pro there's no reason for, I'm gonna add this property here, and I'm gonna map, I'm gonna say min diameter <laughs> is the square root of the min subscribers, and the max, let's just say min d, and the max d, is the square root of the maximum number of subscribers. So now I'm going to map the country's, the square root of the country's subscribers, which has a range between min d and max d, and I'm gonna map that between a 10 and 100. And that's the country's diameter. So I wanna, I wanna process, I wanna just sort of like normalize the data within some range. <laughs> <laughs> add the diameter property, and then right down here, I don't need to do any calculations. I'm just gonna say pix x, pix y, country dot diameter. Uh, and you know, with the ellipse function, by the way, you don't need to do the width and the height if they're equal. And then I'm gonna say train map dot zoom, okay? Oh, I think we might have gotten somewhere here. I don't need this anymore. And now, here we go, let's refresh. Oh, max sub is not defined. Okay, what did I call it? Max subs. Max subs. Hmm. Where are all, all of you? Where are all of you subscribers? You all, did everybody unsubscribe all of a sudden because of how long it's taking me to do this and how now, what a mess this video is? Uh, okay. Oh, not, yep, nope. Um, okay, let's do console log data. Let's take a look at this. Let's see what's in that object. Okay, the object is an array with lat long sub count. Ooh, diameter equals not a number. <laughs> so I messed something up there. So let's see. Um, oh, this has to be outside of here. Why is that in there? Oh. So this is something I want to do right before I do this mapping. I don't know why I had that in there. Although it still should have worked. Um, let's console log. Uh, min subs and max subs. Let's see, does that getting a real zero and ninety-eight? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> I have more than I have more. Uh, um, so max subs is zero, min subs is infinity. If sub count is greater than max subs, hmm, that seems weird. Oh yeah, my, my sizes are probably way too small, but hold on. Uh, those seem like strange numbers to me. Zero and 98. I have more than nine subscribers. Oh yeah. Country dot sub count. Where did I get that wrong? Oh. 
Yeah. But still, why is max subs here? So, so low. Let's look at this. Console.log sub count. Huh. Yeah, look at this. There are some much larger numbers in here. Do I have that in the wrong place? Subscribe. I know that this is wrong. Line 59. Yeah, I know that this is sub count. I, I see that now. But I'm wondering why is this saying 98 right here? Oh, square root! No, 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 but I, I console logged it here. Did my square rooting it somewhere else? Oh, I square root! No, 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 this is... Unnecessary. Look at this one more time. Okay, hold on. Why, why, why? Uh, all right, I have, let's look at this. Console log sub count max subs. <laughs> Welcome to watching somebody not able to figure out a problem. Debugging, debugging. 98, 98. Oh, look at this. Are they strings somehow? Because, oh, they must, they're strings. <gasps> they're not numbers. Look at this. If they're strings in alphabetical order, 98 is greater than 979. Ah, I was not being careful. The value that I'm getting out of the table is not a number. I need to convert it to a number. It's by default, and I think probably I might have been able to say something like get number in, with the P5 API, or I'm not sure, let's see. Get number, is that part of P5? No, but I could say get and then convert it, right? A CSV, everything is by default text. And these uh, should probably, I don't know why these sort of worked somehow. Oh, because it came in as an array and somehow, Oh no, because I, I'm pulling it, I'm, that's coming from the JSON file, and they are numbers in the JSON file. The CSV is only text. So now, there we go. That's the maximum number of subscribers. That makes sense. I can get rid of this. I have, uh, I should see, right, there we go. So now, if I zoom in, the sizes aren't changing, right? The size, uh, no, but I want it to, to change. Oh, did I not put that in? No, I'm multiplying by zoom. So hold on, let's, let's see something here. Yeah, what did I get wrong? Yep. Um, Console.log train map.zoom. Let's make sure I got this right. The zoom is two. The zoom is three. Flip min subs and max subs. As zoom. No, they. Right. But I want them to be a fixed. So I think it's doing what it's supposed to do. Right. Because the more I, it is working, but that's not what I want it to do. I want it to be the same size. Um, oh, we don't want it to be zero, right? I want this to be much, much smaller now. So I did want it to divide by the zoom. I just need to make them much bigger then. Um, let me, so in other words, um, hold on. <laughs> Is the zoom linear? Oh, wait, let me think about this. It's nonlinear, that's the problem. That's the problem. Multiplying is correct. It's nonlinear, so hold on. So 
So what did what did Chris do in the example? Plus my map dot zoom. Huh. That's interesting. I mean that's one way. So is it is it just squared? Yeah, is it just squared? No? Oh yeah. Well, I just needed to do the same thing. Square root, right? That's now doing what I expected. All right, look at this. Look at how that circle is over the United States. Nope, nope. <laughs> I mean, it's sort of an interesting. So what is the formula? Leaflet. Why is everything more complicated than it needs to be? <laughs> Uh, Zoom is probably working as a more complex object which you build using those integers. Yeah. Yeah. Power 2 to the Zoom. Oh, oh. Oh, that's interesting. It's some silly Google ratio. Yeah, I think there's a standard. I've, I've read about this before. I've, I've encountered this before. Zoom. A uh, Google Maps API zoom, what's the right zoom level range? Uh, yeah, there's some Mercator projection, so the scale varies substantially with latitude. Formula for correct is based on latitude is this. Wow. Oh, but maybe if it's, uh, uh, yeah, log scale makes sense, log base two. I think that's part, let's look at the MAPPA API. Uh, No, so there isn't a, um, there isn't necessarily a, um, so I, th this would be an interesting to add to MAPPA, power two to the, divide by power two to the zoom, Mercator, let's see, <laughs> hold on. No. Multiply? <laughs> I probably have to go ahead and use that. Uh, yeah, everything's way too big now. Um, um, Oh yeah, this looks right. Right? I mean, I'm not sure that that... Yeah, I think this is right now. 
Yeah, I mean, it might be slightly off. Two to the zoom. Okay, great, all right. <laughs> Back up for a second. Oh, so much for my no editing. Where did I leave off? Let's just go to, yeah, here. Let's go back to here. <laughs> okay, so interestingly enough, this is not a surprise here, but this is not a linear relationship. As I zoom in from one to two, or two to four, I'm not actually just doubling the size. So a uh, formula that I can actually use, it's, um, it has to do with the way the, the, the uh, zoom, the, the, the way that, I'm learning a lot from doing this video. Uh, it turns out, uh, and this shouldn't have been a surprise to me, I have encountered this before, I think, that it's not a linear relationship. When I zoom from one to two, or two to four, I'm not just doubling the size. In fact, so multiplying by the zoom isn't really getting me a consistent size circle as I'm moving and zooming around. So what I really actually want to do is not multiply by the zoom value, and I think it's going to be a little easier to see if I say constant zoom equals so just put it in a variable, train map zoom. And what I want to do is the scale, uh, the scale, I'm just going to say SCL because there's a function in P5 called scale, is uh, 2 to the zoom power. Now this, I don't know if this is 100% exactly right. <laughs> but I'm, um, so I'd have to maybe do some research on this and maybe someone in the comments can give me some help here if I'm, if I'm getting this right. But let me just put this in now, uh, scale. Now, now the problem is now I'm multiplying by a very large number, so this is kind of looks a little bit out of control. So let me go back to my uh, values up here where I was doing this mapping, and I'm actually going to have, I'm going to map between 2 and 10. So the minimum number of subscribers, actually I'll, I'll just go between 1 pixel and 10 pixels. So now if I refresh here, we can move around and we can see, like look at this, you can see here, um, if I zoom in on Brazil, you can sort of see, look, look at the size of this circle, right? And let me keep zooming in. It's kind of staying the same size relative to the country. So this is the effect that I wanted. And again, maybe I'm off by a slight amount. And now I could potentially say like, okay, well actually I'm happy to go, you know, all the way up to 50, 50. And we can kind of see here, maybe this helps a little bit. But now everything's kind of on top of everything else. So I liked it. Maybe let me go back to 20, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so the point is, this isn't necessarily the best way to visualize this data. Maybe what I actually want to do is visualize something about the number of subscribers per like relative to the population, or maybe what I actually want to do is get the sort of GeoJSON data, which is like the outline of all the countries to fill them in. But I at least have done this, and guess what? Just as a quick little extra thing to add to the end of this video, and by the way, look at all these subscribers down here in... Uh, the Virgin Islands, is that where I'm looking at? I don't want to say the wrong place. Um, um, that's kind of amazing to me. Um, I'm going to swap out my uh, CSV file. Let's quickly look at the watch time file. The watch time also has country ID and watch time in minutes. Now the nice thing is um, the nice thing is I already built in all this stuff to kind of normalize the data between the minimum and the maximum. I could also look at views. Maybe I should look at views. Watch time probably makes more sense. So I could really briefly right here change this out and I probably should have just called this, I'm going to call this instead of subscriber data, uh, I'm going to just do a find and replace subscriber data with like YouTube data. Replace all. And I'm now going to Swap this out and say watch time geo. I'm going to comment this out. And the only thing I need to change is I also want to get here. Now instead of subscribers, I want, what was it called again? Uh, watch underscore time underscore minutes. Watch underscore time underscore minutes. And I also, by the way, had one in sub count I should change also, which was uh, views. Let me just change this. Everywhere it says sub count, let me just change this to count. 
um, just to be more generic about it. And let's make sure the, um, okay, and so where, where am I here? Sorry, views. Let's see if this works with views. There we go. So now we're looking at this map based on views. And now let's look at uh, watch time. And I can go to switch it out just by commenting it to watch time minutes. And they all kind of look the same. Be interesting to see what's the relative difference. These are like watch time per subscriber. That's something I could visualize here. Um, I'm sure that many of you watching this could come up with a much more stylish or perhaps more effective way of communicating this. So here's the thing. I will publish the, these data files along with the source code for this particular video. I would love to see you. Maybe we can have some rainbow themed, <laughs> train themed <laughs> visualizations. Um, and uh, try it with other, uh, try it with other uh, mapping APIs. Try thinking about it in different ways. How can you communicate this data better than I have? And I hope you will share that with me. So thanks for tolerating this video, which was very, very long, where I struggled with a lot of aspects. But to me, this is really exciting that I can have a tiled map that I can zoom in and out of and interactively move around as well as draw on top. So by the way, these can all be animations. I, this is the other thing. Like, so so I've done nothing visually or interesting here really or, or I'm not animating anything. And that's the other thing you should really think about, right? So just to like quickly make that, uh, if I say like frame count module is 255 um, and you know the, the scale, the size, the, is, the scale is also times, you know, uh, sine of frame count times 0 0.01 or something, right? I'm just gonna add some weird stuff to animate it, right? You can see that these are now, hold on, let me have that animate a little faster, 0.1. You can see that they're blinking, right? And that blinking is going to stay consistent as I move around the map. And the color is changing. So this is the other thing you can do. <laughs> ah! Ah! You can animate this stuff. So what can you do with this data? What can you do with your own data? What can you do with maps that look like this, with other maps? Think about the projection that you're using. Research about different mapping projections and different ways of showing maps and make something. Share it with me in the comments. Share it with me at Schiffman on Twitter. And also look for the link in the video's description to the codingtrain.com page where you can submit a contribution, a link out to one of your contributions as well, okay? Thanks for watching this video. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing. I mean, maybe you didn't subscribe, which is fine. You don't have to subscribe. But for those of you who are subscribed, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for everything. It's, a, it's an honor and a, a privilege for me to get to make these video tutorials uh, and, have, and reach uh, people um, all over the world. And let's just have a look one more time at all of you all over the world. There you are, all of you all over the world. Thank you. Mwah. Um, okay, I got through that. Is that, is that really very flat to like, um, uh, De DeMarcos Rosa wants to see, wants to see my city. Um, where's your city? Canada? <laughs> I don't think it's called Canada. Uh, where's Canada? So this is Canada here. All right, I'm going to take off that. Um, so one that um, that this crazy stuff. And uh, I'll, I'll leave the color cycling because I think that's useful for. Um, I mean, just to sort of make the point. Okay. Thank you, Sammy Haas. Ooh. All right. Um, I've really got to go. <laughs> this did not happen in the one hour I, I had planned for. Everything always takes me longer. Everything is always harder than you think. That's the way of coding. Maybe for you, you just breeze through everything, but I don't think so. I think you're probably more like me. You get tripped up everywhere. <laughs> it's always embarrassing. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Um, could you make it that we can see where the viewers of this live stream are? So in theory, that's possible, but I'd have to probably use the YouTube API for that. Uh, I, I could try to research that and see, um, but um, I've got to go. It's almost six o'clock. 
And a barber shop that I was going to go to was definitely closed. Shoot. So I don't know. I guess this is me. This is what you're stuck with. Uh, I, I should read some random numbers for the 500th live stream. Not the 500th live stream, but for whatever. I'm going to go to page 500. Oh, there isn't a page 500. The random numbers only go to 400. Is there a page 500 for the, hmm. I guess I could read 500 random numbers. Let's just do 50. I don't know what to do. Oh, 500 plus 100. 400 plus 100 is 500. So I just need to go to 100 here. There we go. 1.484, negative 1 1.517, 0 0.740, 0 0.475, 0 0.477, 1.109, negative, negative 1.109, 1 1.272, negative, negative 0.946, negative 2, 0.288, <laughs> crud. <laughs> That's the closest I can get to swearing on this YouTube channel. <laughs> I think I swore once. <clears throat> 0 0.163, 1 1.281, negative 1 1.923, 0 0.661, 0 0.215, 2.373, 1.686, 1.493. 1 all right, everybody. Um, uh, so uh, Kalamak in the chat is asking, how can you add country ID and numbers into those bubbles? So I could use the text function. I could use a DOM element. Um, but uh, just really quickly, just to see, like if I were to say fill, I don't, I, I, by the way, I didn't keep the country ID here. So I would need to add it to this. But I could use the text function. So I'd, I'd love to see people do that. Um, uh, the ukulele. All right. I can't. I can't resist. Let's do some random number ukuleleing. Can you see? I want you to be able to see that this is the book. Ooh. <laughs> it's never going to prop up. <laughs> ah! <coughs> I'm going to make this work somehow. Stan, Stan book. <laughs> Everybody, now you can all understand how I broke my elbow so easily last summer. Okay, there we go. There we go. Can you read that that's a million random digits? I guess so. Oh, but we should probably put this here. Sixty-six thousand six hundred. Seventy-seven, fifty-seven thousand and thirty-seven, seventy-five, six hundred and thirty-two, nine thousand seven hundred thirty-seven. That's not the right chord. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> Look, I only <laughs> started trying to learn to play the ukulele three weeks ago, so cut me some slack. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Um, thank you for subscribing to this channel. Please stay in touch. I, I will be uh, releasing a lot of video content, all the edited versions of all this live stream nonsense. I won't include any of that over the next few weeks. I might, you might not see me with a new live stream until July. So, but I will be back, and I'll be back to finish those, those uh, TensorFlow.js color classifier. I will try to do a convolutional neural network with TensorFlow.js to do an image classifier. I think that's, that's the, gonna be the end of what I wanna do with TensorFlow.js. And then I'm gonna move to the ML5 library, which is just a, a, a layer on top of TensorFlow.js, and in some ways I'll still be using that. Um, so, uh, may, oh yes, random music gen, all sorts of things must come eventually, but it just takes a long time to code stuff. It's a little time. All right, everybody, uh, will this live stream, yes, this live stream will be available the instant I press stop uh, at the URL that you are currently watching. It does go to unlisted, and then I will make it listed once um, Mathieu, who helps me uh, manage the channel, has a chance to like put a description and time codes and things like that in it. Okay, everybody, Mwah. Mwah. have a wonderful week. I will definitely not be back any day this week. If things, the stars align, I will be back sometime next week or sometime in July. But I will be on the internet, so you can find me on Twitter. You, you, I always read all the comments. I really do read all the comments on the channel. Um, and um, I just thank you. This has been this this has been a sur really surprising thing that's happened to me <laughs> uh, in the last few years. I mean, I I think that I when did I first? I'm pretty sure that I didn't. I've had the, the I don't. I think I uploaded the first. Uh, hold on, let's go. I uploaded the first video tutorial to YouTube. I I had been making them on Vimeo for quite a while in the fall of 2015. And then, um, and then, uh, if I go to like the live stream playlist, I don't know if that's on here. Um, I, where do I go to playlists? Um, uh, unlisted live streams, oh boy. <laughs> What's in there? Uh, live stream, ah, no, 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 go away, live stream, I could really use some, where are the live, do I have to like, oh, I have to keep like scrolling down, this is insane, <laughs> there we go, live stream archive, <laughs> I don't want to be able to hear you, I need to turn that this, is July 29th, 2013. Oh yeah, this is, I attempted to do a live stream on July 29th, 2013, which incidentally is my birthday. That's kind of interesting, July 29th. Okay. Oh look, there's Sean Van Every. This was a test using yeah. Google Hangouts, but then this is the real first live stream with the system I have now, which was September 4th, 2015. So it has been, I can't do this math, almost three years. Um, and so thank you. <laughs> you can watch all these live streams. Um, good night, everybody. Have a wonderful evening, morning, night, sleep, all those sorts of things. Enjoy some fresh air. Give a hug to a friend. Do something good in the world if you can. Uh, be kind, and I will see you uh, next time. Let's find something we want to make, some crazy idea. We'll figure out what it takes to make that dream appear. We'll try to understand now as we ride along again now. Hop on the coding train, coding train, coding train. Come along and join us as we light it up and go. Using only our imagination as the road. Whatever you